just give it a minute. <laughs> Do we need to worry about mood lighting? Is that important? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> well thanks for coming along. Um, I wanted to start, um, and a, in a way that I've been starting every, every talk I've given this year, um, in that I'm, I, I get quite ranty and, and angry about things on occasions on Twitter. Anybody who follows me on Twitter, you will see this a lot. Um, and I was reading something about how someone said that, oh yeah, the reason there's so few women in um, active roles in IT is because, oh, they've got no role models. And I took huge exception to this because there are so many role models. And I've been doing a different role model every talk I've done this year. And I will continue to do so until the end of the year, including in Vienna, etc. Okay, so I wanted to talk about Sophie Wilson. Uh, who's, actually, I don't know where she's from, but I know she was at college in Cambridge and lived in Cambridge. Um, and she started her IT career, IT career, making um, automatic feeders for cows, which is kind of unusual, which had never been done before. Nobody had ever done this automated thing before. It was kind of cool. She then got a job with a company called Acon Computers. Uh, in the UK, in Cambridge, and they heard of a situation where the BBC, the tele television and broadcasting company in the government one in the UK, was going to do a whole TV series about IT, computing. And they wanted a standard computer that anyone could go out and buy and follow along with the series. This is in the 70s, um, 78, 79, something like that, or maybe early 80s. And Acon said, yeah, we can do that. We'll make you a prototype. And they said, come back to us and we'll show you a prototype. Who'd like to take a guess at how long from, the, from saying, yes, we'll make you to a prototype, to designing a whole computer and showing a working prototype it took her and her friend? Anyone like to take a guess? About eight years. About eight years to a working prototype. 70s or 80s? I think it was the end of the 70s. Five, six years? Hmm. They did it in a week. <laughs> they did it in le actually less than a week, just. Which is, actually, it's quite ridiculous. <laughs> um, they didn't think they'd be able to do it. They did. She then went on to do something that affects everybody in this room. She went on with her colleague, whose name I've completely forgotten now, uh, Steve Ferber to think, well, what do we do after the BBC microcomputer? We need something faster. And we need it to be cheap. And they talked to companies in the States who all wanted loads of money for chipsets and stuff like that. You know, kind of nightmare. So Sophie said, oh, we'll make our own. <laughs> As you do. And they'd heard of this thing called RISC, Reduced Instruction Set. Um, and Sophie and Steve developed over the next year a thing called ARM, um, a process as a design called ARM, and Sophie designed the instruction set herself, basically in her head. <laughs> um, ARM was used in some Acon computers for a while, and then a bit of this, this kind of quite large but kind of failing computer. Uh, um, company in the US at the time went, yeah, we need that for something we've got an idea on. Um, and that was Apple. And they went on to develop the Newton using ARM processors. That kind of died because it 
it was a bit ahead of its time <laughs> they were trying to do things that are difficult now um, but the, the, the cash injection they made made a huge difference and the, the incredible thing was they designed this Apple chip this, this ARM chip sorry and <laughs> they wanted to make something cheap so they said well it shouldn't get too hot because if you make something that's too hot you've got to bolt heat sinks on it and stuff like that it just needs to work in its plastic packaging so it needs to be used fairly low power in fact it used so little power that when they were testing the first test versions of it it used so little power that they couldn't understand why the test, measure, uh, test instruments were showing that there was no power being consumed by the actual chip. And then they realised that the chip was working and it didn't have any power supplied to it at all. Um, it was working on the leakage of current from the other chips around it. It, was, it needed so, much, so little power. Um, it was using less than um, 0.1 of a watt. Um, for the first versions, which is ridiculous, okay? And because of that, it became quite popular. It became quite popular to the extent that I'm probably correct in saying every single person has at least one, probably two, arm chips on their person right now, okay? You'll probably have one in your phone. If you've got a hard disk in your computer, there's probably an ARM chip in that. There's chips. ARM is the most popular processor in the world. By such a margin that even if you take the entire population of the world, there'd be enough for four each. It's ridiculous. All down to her and her colleague Steve, which is kind of incredible. Okay, I said I'd do that, and I did. Uh, I should probably explain. Oh God, I hate to. I really shouldn't have put this afterwards, should it? Because it makes me look like an idiot now. Um, who am I? I'm Rachel. I rant on Twitter a lot, and <laughs> I get involved in. Well, I'm a freelance developer, but I also get involved quite a lot in the Drupal community doing core contribution and looking after how we do mentoring in the Drupal core contribution, etc. Um, I'm also, for my sins, a member of the community working group, uh, which means when you send your thing saying, oh my god, this horrible thing happened, I get to read it, and it makes me feel sad. Uh, on occasions it's quite stressful. <laughs> um, but I care about it a lot because it's been a community that's been really great for me over the years, so I can't complain. I also wanted to find out who you were. Uh, I've not been a, I've, I've only been through Belgium once, and that was the only photograph I ever took as I came through. So uh, I think it must be at a train station somewhere. Um, I wanted to find out about you. So who here is? Developing Drupal. Who's a developer? Okay. Who does more sort of um, front end things and design? Okay. Who does more project management and other functions of a similar nature or marketing? Yeah. Who's a business owner? Or, oh yeah, or like a senior person who tries to get staff. Okay, cool. All right. Well, for each of those groups, what I want to talk today, what I want to talk about, is how to make you money. Okay, each of those different groups, by looking at some of the things I talk about, it's about making your life better, all right? And it applies to everyone. And that's, it's a word that actually kind of drives me a bit nuts. Um, contribution, you hear it a lot in the Drupal community. Oh, what are you going to contribute? Um, and people assume that means that you're going to make patches to code and so on. It's not, there's loads of different things. But the reason I have a problem 
with us using that term, and I must admit, I've had a problem with the way that Dries uses it as well, and I'll be bringing that up with him later, is that it sounds like a one-way thing. If this, this is the Oxford English Dictionary version of it, and I was going to get a Belgian one, but I couldn't understand it, if I'm honest. Okay, And it, it, it talks about... Does this work? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, a gift. Contribution is a gift. And that's why I have a problem with it. Because getting involved in and making effort on some of the things within the community is not a gift. It's a two-way thing. You might put effort in, but you will get back in spades more from it. Okay? Oh, thank you. And I want to go through at least one example of... I've got water. Great. Uh, one example of how you can contribute, but actually it's not a gift. You get back so much more. Okay. I want to talk about people. I think it's reasonable to say, and I don't think anybody would disagree with me, I hope not. If not, I want to know why, because that would be interesting. But the best companies are made by the best people. Okay? Companies, agencies, whatever, are nothing without the people that work for them and work with them. So, for your company to be successful, they need to both acquire and retain the best people. Yeah? And the best people are the ones that inspire you now. The people you think, you, you could name them. Alright? I'm sure you could name people that inspire you. Okay? I sent out a survey at the very beginning of the year to a few people that I knew. I might not have sent it to you, I can't remember. <laughs> Asking about where do you get you, how do you get people? How do you get these amazing Drupal people? Uh, I, I, got, I got some replies um, that actually it's not that easy getting hold of senior people. Interestingly, everybody talked about they kept using the developer's word. This thing's this laser's rubbish. Okay, I never mentioned developers in the actual stuff that I sent out. <sighs> They're expensive. Now, that's not just expensive in terms of the ongoing costs of someone, their, their salary, but it's also in the, in the costs of acquiring them. If you go through an agency, then you've got to pay, what's the going rate at the moment? About 30% for an agency, yeah? 30% of your prospective new employees' salary, you've got to pay the agency just to find them. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> it depends. It, dif it changes around. It, it changes depending upon where you go. Um, and people said th th one of the ways they find senior people is by actually being involved in the community and getting to know people and going up and speaking to them. So if they see people down here talking or being involved in the queues, etc, etc, etc. By doing that, they're senior somehow, but that's, that's good. Okay. I've stopped. Okay. <laughs> Another one, I asked... Well, how do you make, how do you take the people you've already got and make them senior? And I actually got the request, I actually got the reply, I don't have time to do that. Which I found a bit worrying. How, why would you not think the very best way to get senior people is to grow them yourself. Okay. Because if you can grow them yourselves, you're saving 30%. 40%. 
forty percent, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, completely. Okay. So I asked I asked these business owners these questions. And then I started thinking about, well, who is it that I look up to? Who are the people that made me think and learn and so on? Um, and it made me think about what it actually is that I look up to people for. And the people I look up to are people like Kathy Taze, people like, strangely, Morton. I don't even think I need to say his surname. I hope not, because I can't remember it. Well, I can, I just can't pronounce it. Um, people like Jess, XJM. Uh, the things I've learned from those people is how they interact with others and how they inspire others. Okay? Um, I can't tell you the number of things I've learned from Kathy. Incredible. So, those, those skills that those people have are pretty incredible. That's what makes me think, I want to pay this person the earth to come and work for me, because they know all these amazing things. And, but the companies were saying, I don't have time to do it. When it, there is something in that. It, there is something in the fact that it takes effort to, to help grow staff and bring them up. It takes effort both upon the company to give them the time and to give them the resources and to give them the training courses, um, etc. It also takes effort upon the people themselves to actually want to do that because learning is hard. It's hard work. It's fun, and it's enjoyable, but it's hard work. And it probably means you'll be doing more than you have to do to fulfill your current job description. Yeah? It takes a lot of encouragement, and that's not easy. You've got to sit there, do the teaching, you've got to give them the trust, give them the chance to actually experiment and try to do all these leadership things and to grow into senior staff. And you've got to do that while they're also doing their job. Yeah. Well, how do you do that? Well, the thing is, we are all capable of this. We are all capable. Yes, we all can be heroes. We can do this. We can grow ourselves, become those senior roles, every single person here. Yeah. One, you don't. You as a, it's quite handy this because I've got all the business, all the people over here, business owners, business owners over here. So you can do this. You as staff, if you think actually, do you know what? I want that senior position at work. You are capable of doing it. You've just got to go out and do the things that you needed. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to wait for your boss to say, here, go on this how to be a manager training course. Because frankly, it doesn't exist. And you as business owners, you can give them the time to do it, but you've also actually should be able to let them get on with it. Because the ones that want it the most, will ask. You've got to make sure that they know they can ask. That's the hard thing. They've got to know, actually, yeah, I think you're capable. Okay. So, I'll, if I wasn't going to mention this at some point, it would be a bit pointless, me being here. But where can your staff, you, go and practice at being a leader? Well, actually, we do make place for to do that. You, it is right in front of you. And that is by practicing them at work, yeah? But also, go practice them on me. Go practice them on him. Go practice them on her, yeah? 
the Drupal community. We are here. If you want to learn and practice and prove that you are leadership material, we're here. We're waiting to be led. So, it's specifically when we come round, and we, we do it every, every year, twice a year specifically, we do the Drupal Mentored Core Sprint at DrupalCons. We do monthly online uh, mentored meetings. Uh, they take place. If you go to the Core Mentoring uh, section on the Drupal.org website, I've got some links later, um, you, know, you can find these things and you can come and help. And it's not just coding, it's all the things. Yeah? Helping people manage their workload, the project management stuff, there's all those opportunities for that. So getting involved specifically in, and as I say, I'm just using mentoring as one example of the things in, in the Drupal community for this, for this exercise. You can practice skills. Okay? So, there are some skills that are e most obvious. Yeah? The, the leadership attributes of showing technical capability is an obvious one. Yeah? I can guarantee you that if you come along Friday, Vienna, you'll get sat with people. And if you can do the basics, yeah, and learn how pa patches work and so on, maybe this time, if you've not done it before, you come along and get led by somebody else. And next time, you're leading them. It really doesn't take much more than that. Yeah? Interestingly, though, you don't need to be the best PHP developer in the world to help mentor people. You don't. You don't even have to be somehow better at PHP than the person that you're helping. You just need to be giving them something that they still need. And we all have things that we're amazing at. And they're different for each of us. I can guarantee you now, and I probably shouldn't admit this to everyone because it's kind of job limiting, but my PHP skills are surpassed by probably most people in this room. Okay? And yet, <laughs> for Vienna, I'm sprint lead. Yeah? I'm ordering everybody around. It's quite weird. Um, so, sh being able to show technical capabilities is, is fine and it's kind of obvious, but it's not the only thing. You'll get to meet some amazing people who will teach you, even while you're teaching them. Okay? It's all the other things. All the other things that matter. And actually, people like Baddy and, sorry, I don't know your name. Rene. Pardon? Rene. Rene. The people like Baddy and Rene need from senior staff isn't just the ability to write PHP or CSS or whatever it is, or be a great P project manager. What they need are all the other things. They need your ability to create belief in others. Yeah? They need you to have a capability of making or helping other people realize that actually they're not useless, that they are good, and that they can do things. Because we all know ourselves. One of the hardest things is believing in ourselves, especially with code. For God's sake, it's horrible. Yeah? Pretty much you, spe you start on something, and you, about halfway through a particular problem, you're like, I know nothing. And that's when you need your boss. <laughs> Saying, actually, do you know what? You do. Okay? <laughs> you need your senior staff to be able to actually show a little bit of emotional intelligence, understand how to deal with different people. Everybody's different. How you work that, how you keep them going, etc. You're gonna, if you're going to go and do Drupal mentoring, <laughs> you're going to have to practice that, I can guarantee. <laughs> Another thing is, 
<laughs> you need to be able to show if you're a senior, senior member of staff and you want to grow into that, you're going to have to be able to show that you can understand how organizations work. You're going to have to be able to show that you can not just uh, sit there and write great code, but it's irrelevant if nobody thinks it's worth putting in the product. In the product. Yeah? Only by, and if I use the Drupal, the Drupal core example, only by working out the, and realizing that um, words have gone out of my mind, only by realizing that it's how you interact with other humans is what makes you able to get things done. Yeah? That's the difference between a developer and a senior developer. Somebody who realizes that actually doing the code is only a little bit of the job. And also being able to have a bit of thought, and being able to see what's going on overall. Um, so in your business that might be actually thinking, well, occasionally we want the products out of the door. Yes, you might think that you can come up with a very beautiful solution to something, but actually what you need to do is invoice the client. Yeah. Um, so knowing the right time to do something beautiful and the right time to do something that delivers is worth it. Strategic insight. There's more to it than that, but yeah. Okay. And also being able to realize that someone needs to be pushed more. Some, sometimes that happens. You need to think, how can I get just that little bit more out of this person? <laughs> Nearly there. Holding yourself accountable, yeah. If there's one thing you'll learn doing mentoring is that actually, especially as you meet, if you get the mentoring leads, you've got to stand up and say, yeah, actually I've, I've got to deliver on this and I've got to make this work. Yeah, and if it doesn't, actually it's me to blame. So if it all goes wrong in Vienna, it's me to blame, okay? Um, kind of wish I hadn't said that now. <laughs> and the other one is uh, inner strength. Yeah, it's hard work. Going out and doing a full day's work and then doing some mentoring stuff as well takes a bit of push. Takes a bit of push. Being able to demonstrate that to people who might want to employ you, including your current boss, in a senior role is a great thing. Okay? I'm going fast. Okay, so it must be a good thing. It must be. If you're going to get prat time by getting involved in the community, particularly in this case in terms of mentoring, you're going to be able to demonstrate these things. You're going to be able to practice them. You're going to be able to make mistakes that are not costing your boss money. That's a nice place to be, okay? Because you will make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes when you're learning something new. Everybody. All right? I was rubbish at noticing which were the, ca the candidates for um, the live commit in Dublin. And uh, I ended up scrabbling at the last minute to find one. It was quite bad. And the people that, were do that actually wrote it had nearly all gone home. And I, I was ashamed. So I made a mistake. And it won't happen this year. Um, okay. For the business owners, giving people chance to sit with other people that are not going to cost you money other than giving them the opportunity to be in a room with, you know, at, at a DrupalCon or whatever. Great. Let them get on with it. Let them practice. Let them make mistakes. Okay. So, the obvious answer to how to get involved if it's something that you think is useful to your career 
and I think it is, it's been useful to my career, I've learned so much, um, is come along to a mentored sprint. Yeah? If you don't feel ready to be involved and wear the yellow t-shirt yet, I think it's yellow this year, um, fine, come along. If you want to learn a little bit, sit down, be mentored. But watch what's happening. Watch how it's frustrating. Watch and think about all the things I've talked about there and think about who's doing what? Who's showing me that? What are they practicing? How are they making mistakes? You're more than welcome to do that about me as well because I'll be making mistakes. Okay? If you can make it to Vienna, and I really, really would love you to, please, please, the, the day where you will learn the most, by far, will be Friday. If you can only make three days, skip Tuesday. I won't be offended. So my session's on Tuesday. I won't be offended. Come on Friday. Okay? It's worth it. It's intensely frustrating. But it's worth it. You'll learn and you'll grow. You really will. If you are coming and you feel that you can mentor, we have a spreadsheet. And that spreadsheet says who's doing what and so on. Yeah? If you go to that link, it'll sign you up and it will add you to a mailing list so that our comms people for mentoring will be able to give you loads of information, tell you how things work, make sure you know what's going on, get you a free t-shirt, which you won't get as part of DrupalCon Vienna this year otherwise, etc. I know people like t-shirts. And the mentor dinner, actually, do you know what? I, I do oft, often forget the, ven, the mentor dinner, which is on the Friday evening. Those people, our mentors, we like to say thank you. And assuming we get, the, <laughs> assuming we get enough sponsorship, is buy them dinner. And it's usually a really good night. Because these are people who have worked hard all day. And there's something about when you've worked hard all day and pushed yourself, and you get together afterwards, it's a really, really good feeling. It may well involve schnitzels this year, I think, yeah. But seriously, the, the mentor dinner is when you will see me finally relax uh, after a long week, and that usually involves me ending up in a state, which is usually hilarious. <laughs> Very embarrassing for me. So, yeah, there's lots of things. Do make it to that. If you can't, no problem. We still want you to be involved and helping to mentor others. If you've got, you know, that little bit of coding knowledge, come along to the IRC uh, chat on Drupal dash contribute. Yeah. Uh, if you look in the uh, the channel details, it will tell you what times of the month that we do um, mentored mentored work in there, etc. We do, we, do, we do lots. We do lots. I want to eventually start to expand it and look at how we do more mentoring of the mentors, etc., and growing people and so on. It's something I'm kind of starting to look at now. Uh, so you'll probably see me ranting more and more about that over the next few months. Um, so <laughs> Moving on, so there are other things in the community that you can grow your knowledge, your ability to be those senior staff. Um, the community working group is slowly expanding. Uh, we're at six members now, uh, spread all around the world, although three of us are in the UK, weirdly. Um, and it consumes way, way, way too much of my time. Um, and we will need to start rotating those members. Uh, writing code. Writing code for Drupal. Writing code in modules and writing code in Drupal core is a really interesting exercise in itself because it's where you can write perfect code. 
So when bad is not saying you've got to have this out by the end of the day or, you know, whatever, uh, you just do it any old way you can, not quite that bad, <laughs> then, then you can write, sit there and write perfect code because the urgency is timed by you, which is quite nice. Did you know that the Drupal.org website is open source? It's actually a project, Drupal underscore org, actually in the project folder. And you can submit changes to it. I don't think most people realize this. Uh, if you come up with an idea and get, get, get some buy-in of something that should happen on Drupal.org, uh, they can create you a d whole development environment. It's, it's ace. It's like power. Okay. Um, and f finally, no, not finally, the things that I've been doing, helping to run the mentoring, yeah? Why not? We need people all the time. We'd love some project managers to help us keep us under control. We'd love that. Someone to actually say, hey, you're going to do these things by these date to get to this goal. Yeah, we'd love a PM. I, I, that would make my life so much easier. Um, did you know Lindsay, OK Lindsay on Twitter and thing has started up the community spotlight again? Helping, helping Lindsay write community spotlights about members of the community and what they're doing. Get involved. You'll learn about people. You'll learn what matters. You'll learn why the people getting, getting featured are getting featured. And that might help you kind of recognize upon yourself. <laughs> and finally, you know, run your own groups. Run your local groups. D does anybody do that here? Does anybody actually run the local Drupal groups? I had a feeling you might. Uh, <laughs> do you have time to have a life? Okay. Uh, there, I mean, there's so many options. It just goes on and on and on. Um, so, do go to that link. And find something that interests you. And think about how getting involved, I'm in trouble now because I've just walked outside the uh, camera, how getting involved helps improve you as a person and as prospective future senior people. Okay? Cool. Right. That's all I was going to talk about. So really, please ask questions, otherwise I'm going to look a bit weird. And I have to repeat what you say, apparently. Any questions? Oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing at all. So who's going, who's going to Vienna? Who's going to Vienna? Oh, no. Do you know what? They've just reduced the ticket prices. If you go to the platform.sh website, you can get a ticket reduction code. Yeah, if it makes it easier. You have a question. Yeah. So I, I noticed that very many of my employees, and I, we've talked about it very often, but I would like to like also get yourself in the group. So they are, they are just a little bit scared of coming and approaching some people that they don't know and they've never spoken to and they've seen maybe you talking here a lot on all kinds of conferences and my question is this, like how did you start you know, how did you because you have to know somebody what would be your advice for somebody who just really wants to participate i know it's easy to say come and talk to me but like what would be your advice to somebody to I so the question is, what would be my advice for, or, or my experience of how I got started in getting involved? This is why I'm ahead of time, because I forgot this bit. <laughs> so, I went to Front End United when it happened in Copenhagen. And it wasn't, I don't want to say it was badly organized, but a lot of things kind of went weird. 
Yeah. So they were down on speaker numbers. Uh, they were down. They actually. I was going to say down on Wi-Fi, but actually they had no Wi-Fi, which is kind of entertaining. So we literally ran out and got a load of 3G dongles for everyone, or rather Morton did, because he was organising. Um, I love him. Uh, so what actually happened was we ended up with I think probably four talks for the whole weekend and the rest of the time we decided let's sprint on some front end stuff there was a lot of twig stuff going on at that time and this was new to me it wasn't really something that I knew how to do I knew the basics I knew that you had to make a patch and I kind of knew git kind of so I was kind of in the deep end by accident but the thing that mattered was the people who I was sat nearby who weren't specifically mentoring, but actually were by their actions, treated me with respect. They actually went, yeah, you can do this just as well as anybody here. They facilitated me and, and kind of gave me the attention that I needed. They got me through the worst of it. They made me think higher and challenged what I could do. And actually, you know, said, no, actually, you can do this. And they were there doing this. And this, this was Pete, this was Morton. This was Ruben. It was Lowry. It was Christina um, from Spain who gave, treated me, some idiot from Yorkshire, with the same respect as they were teaching any, uh, they were giving to anybody else. And that had a huge effect upon me. Um, so even though I was there kind of accidentally, the way I was helped and encouraged, especially encouraged, which is why I keep saying it, everybody here can do this stuff. And you can, because I can. If I can do it, believe me, seriously, anyone can. Be they just kept going. And we did stuff, and we sat there, and we had music going, and we just did good stuff. Yeah? Uh, in fact, I think it was, it, in fact it was there, I did the commit to Drupal 8 core that changed, you know when you make a file download field in Drupal, um, and you upload some files into the field, and then it gets a little icon next to it uh, with the file type, I don't know if that, they used to be images, and well, they're not anymore, they're CSS backgrounds, that way that they're overridable in your theme. I did that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you can do all these little things. And actually, you can do it. Just get yourself into a situation where you can do it. Find out where the sprint's going on. Talk to somebody there. Don't be afraid. But for goodness sake, if you're the person who's there, and someone comes into the room, be the person who makes them feel like they can do it. Because they need you to actively do that. And the example you give is exactly that. They, just, they won't say something. But it's up to us to say, hey, come and have a look at this. What can you do with this? And then give them the ability to do it. That's all that being a mentor is. That is it. There isn't anything else. Okay? Does that kind of help? Okay. Anything else? <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much.